What's going on everybody? Gabriel Bello here and we got something real special. I wanted to do a reaction video to this video by Jordan Peterson uh, months ago. But you know, life happens and we get caught up in the rigmarole. So uh, before we get going, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's get to it. So let's uh, let's hear, let's do a little switch around and let's hear Mr. Peterson's thoughts on the importance of music. So let's think about what music is. First of all, it's it's a pattern. So non-pattern music is noise. It's a pattern. But then it isn't one pattern. It's multiple patterns layered on top of one another in a harmonious manner and in a manner that indicates, in some sense, communication between all the patterned layers because they have to go together. And so... From a biblical mindset and a biblical worldview that makes complete sense that these patterns would interweave uh, as you know i've used this quote before from pastor short i can't remember his name off the top of my head uh the canadian pastor um you can go back i'll put the the a card up here in the description uh, but the quote is music is the only thing in the earth that was not made in the earth music comes from outside of this existence y'all and we all know music is something special, right? It all, it, I mean, there's, since the existence of human beings, there's been music. So it goes beyond our existence. All right, let's uh, go back to that. What's the world? Well, the world's made of objects. It's like, no, it's not. It's made of patterns. Uh, also, the, if you understand the Hebraic way of understanding the Bible, you understand that, you know, he made the sun, the moon, the stars for seasons, for times and seasons, patterns. So what you do when you study scripture, you study the patterns so that you can understand what's going to happen next. It's the same thing here. Pattern. You recognize the pattern. That's all music is. Jazz musicians. That's why they say jazz musicians are some of the best musicians, because we're taught to understand patterns and chord structures and chord changes. So when a change is happening, we know, oh, this is going to resolve. There's about two or three ways this could go. The most common way is this. And most of the time we're right. So the more experienced you are anyway. So music is just like the world because the world's made of patterns and then music has layered patterns that are all moving together in a harmonious manner. Mm. And so what do you do when you hear that, especially if it's got a beat? Well, then you move your body and you want to, right? The music calls to you to move your body. So now you're moving your body in sync with the pattern layers of the world. That and that's funny because when you're not moving in sync with the music, you cause dissonance and cacophony, or as he always talks about, he talks about order and chaos. And that's the chaos. That's when you get out of God's order, right? You throw the music off. You throw, You get out of tune. Anyway, let's. That's meaning. And then there's more to. So that's so cool. Is Music is an analog of the structure of existence itself. And it calls to you to take part in that. And then, so maybe you dance by yourself. Or maybe even better, you dance with someone else. And so then you both bring your bodies into this patterned relationship with this multi-layer harmony together in a spontaneous way indicating that you can both play and are therefore potentially trustworthy future mates that's unbelievably cool and birds dance it's not just human beings you know yeah <laughs> yeah human beings are not the only ones that create music uh there's a in this book i don't know where i put it but in the dr michael brown's the power of music and also in uh michael tyrell's uh, the healing power of music um, they talk about how bird, birds singing, I mean, whales sing, all, so many different am, animals sing, but they talk specifically about the bird song actually calls flowers to open up. And there's been studies of, you know, them playing Mozart and classical music over crops and increase the crops. But, you know, I've talked about that before. If you haven't watched, uh, watched me talk about that before, watch that video. Oh, so this is a deep thing. And then music does something else too. It, it puts you on the border between chaos and order because a boring song does exactly what you expect it to do. Modern pop music, modern church music does exactly, it's formulaic, boring. And it gets dull very quickly. And an unlistenable song is so random you can't follow it. 
higher level jazz, neoclassical, it's noise, right? So that's that super ordered formulaic over here, super experimental, oh, we're super artsy, oh my gosh, we're on this other level, and it's like, dude, that's noise, that's like pots and pans falling into the thing and somebody going, burr, 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 and it's like, oh no, it's so deep. No, it's not as garbage. And so what you want is predictability with a leaven of unpredictability. And then that puts you right on the edge. That's the zone of proximal development. Vygotsky discovered that. Like a Hendrix song. Yeah, yeah like a Hendrix song. Well, any great music does yeah, that. But it, I mean, I Hendrix think, has so much creativity inside the structure of the song. Because uh -huh. there's riffs that he'll Right, do. right, right. And everyone right. loves, oh man, I went to this. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't use Hendrix as a great example there. I might would use Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, because that's actually kind of a callback to what classical music used to be. You would have a movement and then you'd have a completely different movement, but they would be connected together and using similar themes or, of course, jazz. I mean, jazz is just the ultimate example of this or maybe blues. I mean, that's kind of the Hendrix thing where you have the solo. You don't know what's coming next, but it all stays within that structure. You know, that's kind of the American pop music, that fusing of the classical and the blues which gave us jazz but you have a set structure and you have things that happen over that structure but you never get too far away where it falls apart uh unless a song like bohemian rhapsody which it's fantastic for that because it's those movements are so jarring but it still works because they don't go it's not cacophonous it's not random it's not everything's falling apart bar in nashville uh, this band was playing Kelly's Heroes, a great guitarist, best guitarist I've ever seen. And they were playing old country music with a heavy blues rock uh, twist. So they do this great version of uh, Ghost Riders in the Sky, it's 15 minutes long. And mm -hmm. this brilliant guitarist just goes way out on a limb. And everybody in the crowd, it's so, it was so fun to be there. They're just thrilled to death because they're watching this man doing the same thing that surfers do. He's like dancing on the edge of chaos and order in He's this riding. virtue. He's riding the wave. That's that's the beautiful thing about music, man. It's riding the wave, you know, feeling and it, it it it's a combination of the band or the musicians and the spectators or the congregants or those that are that are enjoying the experience and as their emotions rise or the band emotions rise and you create these waves and sometimes the waves can cancel each other out sometimes but when they come together you can create these like exactly what he's saying. I mean, just imagine the suffer like I think there was a there was a video I saw just the other day, like this guy riding this like hundred foot wave. It was insane. I mean, it made me my heart start racing because it was just so massive. And I've had those moments on the stage in performing secular music and especially performing worship music where it's just you're consumed by it. That's I mean, music is just it's it's really significant and different among the arts. Juosic manner. And everyone is so taken by that that it just lifts them out of the normality of their existence you know they see this joy just transfuse them and that's because they got an intimation of genuine meaning and that's why i saved that clip because you can see i mean this is a he talks about god but when when he first came on the scene I and mean, it was it's just the intellectual and, and you can see that's what music does. I mean, it can just pierce straight to the heart and soul of a human being. One of my favorite uh, movies about music is, of course, Amadeus. And when Salieri talks about hearing the voice of God, when he hears Amadeus's music and he talks about, you know, such meaning that's I feel with music when, when those moments happen it's like in the matrix uh, or if you ever saw the animatrix where human beings can snap out of this existence and this reality and then they're in the eternal for just a just a moment and they can we can just kind of paw through the veil of our quantum binding where we're stuck in this fake existence this digital simulation and we get to and we can just feel we just feel there's something eternal there's something else out there and that's you can see it on his face that's that's why music is so important it's such a powerful powerful tool or a powerful weapon to the wielder musicians let me tell you this thing is 
so much more than entertainment. It goes so far beyond that you can touch a human being's soul with a song, with a note, with a series of patterns. And it's uh, and it's 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 not amenable to rational criticism, which is the thing that I thought that struck me as so miraculous about music and why it has this element of salvation. It's like it puts you directly in touch with the meaning that sustains you in life directly. And it shows you what that would be, which is something like to observe the harmonious interplay of the patterns of being stacked on top of one another and then to bring yourself into alignment with that, which is what yogis strive to do and what disciplined athletes strive to do and what we celebrate in athletics and it's all a reflection of the same thing. I'm telling you, if, if you didn't get that, you have to go back. You have to go back and uh, let's, 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 hit that, let's hit that one more time. Let's... Stains you in life directly. Salvation. It's like it puts There's you an element directly of in touch with the meaning that sustains you. It puts you directly in touch with the meaning that sustains you. I mean, that's a sermon. He doesn't know that he's preaching right now. Because I'm a firm believer that the music comes, music came from God. The Bible says that the angels sang as the Lord created. And I believe that the Lord sang creation into existence. And so anytime we sing, anytime we create music, it's, it can be, you know, like a one gauge wire to God all the way up to, I mean, just a massive fiber cable that gets you instantaneous gigabytes of direct contact with the eternal. Ooh, goodness. You in life directly, and it shows you what that would be, which is something like to observe the harmonious interplay of the patterns of being stacked on top of one another, and then to bring yourself into alignment with that, which is what yogis strive to do and what disciplined athletes strive to do. and and pastors and worship pastors and Christians and believers strive to do. And let me tell you, sometimes, sometimes we get it. Sometimes we miss the point of what we're doing. Church musician, Christian musician, musician who is a Christian. Sometimes we miss it. But you, you see the power. You see the power that this thing we call music. You see the power that it has. What we celebrate in athletics and it's all a reflection of the same thing. And that's real. It's real, that meaning. It's real. That's, that's where the clip ends. <sighs> Don't go through life on autopilot. Don't play flippantly. I mean, live each day like it's your last, but especially musician, especially those of you that, like myself, that do this for a living, or do this part time or play in church or play in a band every now and again. This is the, the conversations that I've had with some of my musician friends now that we're out of pandemics and lockdowns and we're back playing music again. What we bring to those that come and hear come to hear us play, we have the opportunity to just for a moment bring people out of the mundane, out of the physical and take them into something, into the spiritual, into the eternal, with this thing we call music. And for the believer, for the Christian, you can allow someone to hear the voice of God in those moments. Right? It's powerful. It's powerful. We'll be talking more about this. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know in the comments. Maybe, you know, give me some other clips or things you want me to, to talk about. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do more. So if you want to support this channel, please, by all means, hit the, uh, you know, go to my Patreon and do the Gabriel Bella music thing. Uh, let me flip this back around. So subscribe to the channel. Gabriel Bello Music, hit that button. I'm on TikTok, I'm on Facebook, I'm on all that stuff, but music is a powerful thing. It's the only thing in the earth that was not made in the earth. Wow. I tell you, friends, Jesus loves you, and so do I. We'll see you soon. Take care.